Hi, my name is Valdemar Pacholik. I am centralized sleep science teacher, and I would like to talk about uh, Connecticut Lope and recession on more range of Long Island. On this map, we see maximum extension of last glaciation and also recession on more moraines of Hudson Lopes and Connecticut Lopes. Um, lopes are streams of ice inside the glacier which move much faster than ice in the vicinity and they can be uh, traced by bulging of the terminus of the glacier. And we see here how this bulge goes from Canada down south, down south, and it's bulging here for Hudson Lope, and we can see the same pattern going here for Connecticut Lope, and then right here we have straight straight line, which uh, doesn't agree with the pattern. That means that Long Island Moraine should be reassessed, and this is the project of my study. Um, on this map, Sirkin's map, we see straight lines of uh, of moraines, and also uh, it shows how boundary between Hudson Lope and Connecticut Lope moves, moves down southwest. This map came from the study in the 70s, and they find out the topographic feature, features of Long Island Sound. Also, you see here moraines of Long Island and shore of Connecticut moraine. Um, those all features here have two things which are common. One thing, they are built of stratified sands and they are topped with coarse sediments. The difference is that uh, on the land, those, top, those coarse sediments are in till. But if uh, erosion is taken in consideration, this difference disappears. Right now, Harbor Hill, Hal Harbor Hill Moraine uh, it's eroded, and what we have left is that stratified sands on the beach topped with coarse sediments. Uh, that's why for the purpose of this study, all these uh, topographical features on the map will be treated as moraines. And another set of information comes from study of till. Uh, till covers entire island, uh, but uh, we don't have actually study of till. We have uh, study of soil. and. Uh, that's why different terminology is used here. Then we have rocky looms, looms on the North Shore, and they change to gravelly looms, which will be gravelly tills, and then sandy looms very close to Great South Bay, which are actually sandy, sandy tills. Um, I analyze two, uh, tills in two locations, Stony Brook and, and Sayville down south. And this is how those tills in Sable looks like. There are thin layer of, of till on the top of outwash. Uh, the biggest difference is uh, between North Shore till and this, this one that uh, South Shore till doesn't contain any boulders. Cobbles are very rare. Um, and this is Harry, the canine, canine geologist. And on a hot summer day, he contemplates origin of those sediments. And this is the findings. If we don't take in consideration the coarse fraction, then percentage distribution of, of, uh, of uh, uh, pebbles, sands, and silt are similar to both locations. Now, the difference comes from color of those sediments. North Shore tills, have, uh, they, they are much darker, and South Shore till, they are light, light yellow. Uh, this suggests different origin. And with under closer inspection, under the microscope, you can see that we have very felsic material in South Shore Till and mafic one, which suggests different, different source. Uh, felsic material ca came from a uh, felsic Avalonian terrain, which is, which is east of, uh, of uh, mm, northeast from eastern Connecticut and eastern Long Island Sound. And those dark, dark tills came directly from north when we have more mafic Acadian terrain. Uh, then in general, we have this situation that light south shore till came from northeastern direction and dark till from Acadian, Acadian more mafic terrain straight to the north. Uh, the question is, 
how far exactly the glacier moves south. And there are only few clues left. And we're gonna follow those clues. One, one of the clues came from the region of Jamaica Bay. If we look closer at the map of Jamaica Bay, we're gonna see that Jamaica Bay has concentric drainage pattern, which suggests that Jamaica Bay during the glaciation was free of ice. Another set, set of information came from study of ocean, ocean bottom sediments in the vicinity of, of the city of New York City. And what they find out that south of south of Long Beach, we have coarse um, gravel descents, which change into coarse coarse sands here, and they are uh, they are Pleistocene sediments. And those sediments to the south bore the uh, Cretaceous uh, Cretaceous sands. Now, if we put those two information on on this map, we'll see that uh, we have the cove of uh, between, between Hudson Low and Connecticut Low. Uh, those coarse sediments of the ocean will show the, the bulging of, of the uh, Connecticut Low. And we can just follow, uh, follow patterns of, uh, of recession and our line should go close to the barrier beach and then turn to back to the ocean. Then in general, we can say that uh, uh, we can trace the boundary of maximum extension, but as far terminal moraine is involved, then terminal moraine, moraine most like, likely didn't form. And the reason is because the glacier slid down the slope, the sediment which was carried was very fine and very easy removed by the glacial uh, drainage, uh, drainage at the front. And on top of this, there was no boulders or cobbles which will build dump moraine in front of the glacier. Now it's time to put all information on one map and we're gonna trace uh, recessional moraines um, starting from 17.6 thousand years and going back in time. Um, north here you see the pattern of recessional moraines which can be traced north uh, of, of Connecticut up to, up to uh, Canada. And the pattern shows that we have Connecticut Lobe right here and then this line goes to Hudson Lobe and the bulge of the Hudson Lobe. That's the main pattern which we're gonna uh, stick to. Uh, we're gonna start now with uh, old Saybrook moraine. Gonna go down to like middle of uh, Long Island Sound and then through the ledge we're gonna go north and we're gonna hold the pattern and then go to Hudson Lobe Mega Bulge. Now our Harbor, Harbor Hill Moraine right here has two stages. Uh, we have the stage of Stratford Shoal and I'm gonna go here for the Stratford Shoal uh, complex and then I'm gonna dip down here through New York Islands and I'm gonna follow, follow the pattern. Now the second stage of uh, Harbor Hill Moraine uh, goes diagonally right here. Then I'm gonna use uh, uh, New York Shoal as a, as a guide line and I'm gonna go through Eaton Neck, New York Shoals and I'm gonna use um, Elmhurst Moraine here to, which will bring me to, to Hudson Low. I'm gonna make a bulge for a Hudson Road. Now, Ronkankama Moraine looks like it had two stages as well. One, one stage is, uh, leads through the North Shore, and we're gonna just follow the pattern, and another stage will be the slightly south of this line. Now, the maximum extension of, uh, of gl uh, glaciation is to the south, and we're gonna go around, around Jamaica Bay. We're gonna dip south into the sediments of the ocean, and then we're gonna uh, go uh, close to Barrier Island, and then go back, back to the island, back to the ocean. Now, bulging of the front of the glacier shows position of the Canada Globe. If we connect those dots, we're gonna find out how exactly Connecticut Lobe moved through 
Long Island. It would be just, just like this. Now, knowing where it's the fastest moving ice, the stream of ice inside of the glacier, we can just use uh, Bernoulli's law to find out how ice moves around. And this would explain this uh, mafic drift, which came from Arcadian terrain from Western Connecticut and, and this uh, felsic drift which came from Eastern Connecticut, Eastern Long Island Sound, which brought material to the south of Long Island. Now we can look one more time on, on the glaciation of Long Island. This is the maximum extension of the glacier. You see here Jamaica Bay between two lobes and and the glacier terminus. We have stages of Ronkankama Moraine and then stages of Harbor Hill, Hill Moraine. Notice that western Long Island Sound was free of ice before the eastern part, part of Long Island, the eastern part, part of Long Island Sound. And then glacier melted back north. Now, as a conclusion, we can say that Long Island moraines follow a recessional pattern, the same one as north of, uh, of Long Island. We can say that uh, Connecticut Lope moved diagonally from Port Jeffers Jefferson south below, uh, below uh, Long Beach. Uh, our uh, determinist moraine can be infer on the base of uh, drainage pattern of uh, Jamaica Bay, sediments of, uh, of the ocean, and uh, general pattern of the glaciation. And also that terminal, pro, um, terminal moraine most likely did not form. Thank you for watching. Valdemar Paholik from Central High School.